Hey Sri Lanka, so today I am going to be interviewing the very cool DJ Mass. As uh, you probably would have known, he's one of those DJs that's made like a big mark for himself in uh, the UAE because after all he's inspired and helped quite a few DJs thanks to his uh, company UD DJs. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like back in the day, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was um, in Dubai a few years ago. Um, yeah, well, we started off, uh, I moved to Dubai like early 2000 and I stayed there for approximately 15 years and during my stay uh, we made a lot of friends, we achieved quite, quite an amount of, uh, I'd say, achievements as a team, as a team, we, mm. did, we did together, yeah, we did it all together. And now you're just doing work as a solo DJ. What does that mean to you now? And what are you going to be doing in the future, man? Um, focusing on myself because I was quite, uh, quite on the rise when it comes to uh, when it comes to my business side of uh, things, and uh, I kind of like uh, took a step back because I needed to focus on myself now, and I. I'm giving myself a hundred percent to uh, do what I like and do what I like, you know, the most, which is uh, making music, playing music, and uh, DJing itself. It kind of like gives you the freedom to express yourself mm. when you're on stage, like no other possible way. So that's why I found myself back in the groove. I would say, yeah. Nice man. So, what does 2017 uh, hold for you? 2017 is kind of like my comeback because uh, four years ago I retired from DJing okay I pulled a Jay-Z on you guys so it's like mm, here's a comeback <laughs> um, I retired from DJing as in DJing as a as a job I would say I retired from DJing um, you know at places where I would work as a resident DJ and so on and so forth so my comeback is more sort of like I, I'm creating my own music I would like to create my own style nice yeah when you say creating your own music is this the first time you're venturing into productions or have you been doing this for a while I've been producing I started a few years ago on Fruity Loops then Acid uh, a couple of softwares that helped me um, you know uh, move then I, I, I was studying at SAE audio engineering oh um, dude that's yeah. cool yeah so while I was at SAE we used Reason everything happens for a reason uh, but then Suban, uh, one of my closest friends, told me everything happens for Ableton. So I had to s switch from Reason to Ableton. And <laughs> here I am. I see, what, <laughs> I see what you guys do there with that. Yeah, so now everything happens for Ableton. <laughs> that's, that's our catchphrase. But yeah, I use Ableton as a software, Ableton Live, uh, and it's uh, kind of like helping me create my own sound, my uh, writing my you know, thoughts into music. Uh, um, and I would like to bring out my own sound, make people happy. It's very melodious, mm. it's very, um, you know, the beats are very cool and uh, which is kind of like me. I'm trying to put my identity into, the, into my music. That's, uh, that's for 2017. And uh, I'll also be touring Asia and Europe uh, by mid-June, July. Um, I'll, I will also be working with a couple of uh, TV shows and um, some concerts this whole year. Yeah, so it's going to be kind of like uh, promoting myself uh, this whole year. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So, as a seasoned DJ, would you be maybe coming down to Sri Lanka to do little workshops for the guys here? Yeah, I would. I've got a uh, a show on the twenty. I can't remember, but end of April. Uh, it's a ninety show somewhere. That. That will be, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be coming back to Sri Lanka for that. So during my stay, hopefully I'll try to plan out a workshop. I wouldn't mind, uh, uh, honestly, I think sharing my knowledge is something that I, I've always been open to. And if anyone asks me any questions or whatever, you know, I always mm. reply as much as I can. Um, except for technical issues. Sometimes, you know, technical issues can be a little drastic. And try to explain everything on, a, on an email is kind of like tough. But besides that, workshop-wise, yeah, definitely you can look forward to it. If someone organizes it, I'll be more than willing to come and help it out. Help you out. said that you were producing tracks. Um, are you sticking to a genre or are you working on multiple genres? Multiple genres. I'm, I would say I'd, I personally like to create uh, 
happy music because that's the trend now you see the whole dance hall soca reggae mumba uh, kind of uh, reggae tones like the the feel good vibe it's coming back and um, i would always like to consider myself to have uh, uh, you know been a dj who uh, enjoy the crowd you know because mm. i kind of like vibe off the crowd so if the He's crowd one of those DJs. yeah if the crowd's having a good time i'm having a good time and uh, i've never shied away from dropping uh, experimental tracks uh, uh, you know it's kind of like something that i would uh, and, you know make make uh, make an advantage of uh, suddenly you know you bring some hidden tracks uh, some mm -hmm. tracks from the past you know bring bring in a bit of nostalgia into your sets uh, yeah stuff like that sampling uh, I, i'm being very creative during my sets and i think i can express myself better mm -hmm. that way mm -hmm. nice yeah. So you're going to be taking like a Saban approach, I'm guessing, in the future. Just put a lot of m your own music into your sets. Uh, not, yeah, well, I would put my music into my sets, but uh, the main difference is uh, when it comes to dance music, if you're, if you're creating stuff like uh, um, house, progressive, techno, uh, you could actually create uh, content mm. which can cater to that audience by your own own music but if you are a DJ who is more sort of uh, into the pop commercial uh, R&B hip hop it's very hard to create content mm. unless you have big names affiliated with you like I could drop a track but if I can get Sean Paul to drop a verse on it yeah that Dude, that, would, that would be something yeah that would be something uh, that we could you know come out as and play it as a hit but besides that I think um, uh, the sets that I would play would still be mainstream uh, oriented but a little bit of uh, mass twist into it and kind of like you know create the own own, own kind of like style um, mm. make it unique but it's all been done no matter how many times we try to create it it's like we've got a certain amount of uh, uh, limitations and that's the uh, that's you know where we we kind of like limit to it because you can't go too extreme because um, the crowd would not understand what you're doing. Mm. Um, for example, like turntablism, you know, like right. yeah, uh, turntablism an, is an art form that's dying because uh, people are moving out of turntablism because we've seen the limits of it. Because once you go beyond that, uh, it's just noise. You can't like, mm. you know, okay. triple prism scratch is something that you can't even hear. You all you hear is like a, it's like, <laughs> right. but not everyone could understand the technical difficulties of actually creating that scratch. So that is why when it comes to beats or sounds, uh, we try to limit within a spectrum of mm. uh, the audience. Because it doesn't make any sense to us going beyond that. True. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And also, you, your first track was like a remix for uh, Bhati and Sun to Siri Sangha Bodhi. Uh, come on, go ahead, say that. Siri Sangha Bodhi Mali Gave. D. <laughs> D. Okay. Yay, nailed I it. I always keep like messing it up. It's like the last word, man, forever. But yeah. uh, that aside, <laughs> okay. how did that come about? Um, Bhatia used to be, um, you know, um, a friend of mine who used to come to the studio. We used to chill and he, we used to, <laughs> yeah, ancient times. <laughs> um, and uh, one day he just came and said, bro, listen to this track. So I just uh, played it and uh, he used to uh, produce with uh, uh, Ranga, Dasanayake and Santush. Um, the two of them um, used to come to the studio. I used to work at Cool Tempo. And it was really funny because um, Bati would come at like 8 p.m. and leave at 12 or 1 a.m. Yeah, we just like sit and just transfer MDs into dads, dads into MDs and he would take Crazy. tracks back and forth. And then he just dropped this track. He just told me, I was like, Bro, this is amazing. I was like, I w it blew me off the roof because it was such an amazing. He just like recorded his vocals over it, and uh, he's just like talking about like uh, Sri Sangabodhi Maliga. It was kind of like a cool rap, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then I just took it. Um, the next day, he just came in and said, "Look what I did to it," and yeah. I just like put a beat into it and some scratches. I code his voice over. He's like, "Whoa, okay." He takes the <laughs> he takes the dad, he takes the MD, and he goes away. The next thing I know is he's bringing it in the live album, and he's like, whoa. "That's called a mass garage mix in the album." I'm like, "Whoa, okay, that's dope." And uh, yeah, that was one of my official remixes. Uh, that was my first official remix, I would say. 
it was like 99, uh, something like that, way back in the day. That track, uh, the remix which I created was, um, uh, was played um, at almost every club or radio station because uh, it had the groove that was needed at that time um, you know the late 90s when people were around 100 BPM and we were playing a lot of mainstream uh, hip-hop and pop songs uh, this track would just blend in perfectly <coughs> and we would just like keep a seamless dance flow I dropped it at Blue Elephant once I remember people went crazy it was like uh, that was the first time we played it at a club and then Cascades as well it was like really dope that that track changed the game and uh, I mean Bhatia Santush they changed the game uh, when it comes to the music scene the local music scene Bhatia and Santush changed uh, you know they created uh, a platform for everyone to shine on mm. and they did change the game yeah so now you know Sri Lanka that was history <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so the future the future the future I can't wait for it man um, it's gonna be a good one yeah the future is uh, it's going to be something that, um, well, I can't say a lot of things because a lot of things are in the pipeline. But I would say that uh, if you log on to my page, uh, if, you, if you sign in or click like, that's DJ Mass, M-A-S-S, M-A-S-S, yeah, <laughs> DJ Mass. Uh, look for me. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated because um, I'm also looking to collaborate with a lot of Sri Lankan artists. And if... Yeah, you can connect Yasmin and because I constantly ask for vocalists, songwriters, singers, uh, we're trying to move into an international arena. Let's not give up. Let's try mm. to put um, you know one of our uh, tracks, uh, one of our artists right up there. And hopefully, hopefully if things are going good. We should be able to you know um, achieve uh, heights that uh, a lot of people doubted that we could. But I think Sri Lankans are yes, tiny island, but we're very musical and mm. we're very talented. And I see the talent like immense, and the recent past has proven over and over with some great production quality standards and great vocalists coming out. Um, so let's not give up, you know. Let's just move forward and um, all that, all that. Yeah, all that, yeah, all that. Yeah, here's to an awesome t uh, 2017, man. Yeah, thank you so much to you too, yes. And you've been doing great. Like I always tell everyone, your show is excellent, and we kind of like yeah. support. Uh, you know the local scene from all around the world wherever we are maybe dubai singapore europe usa we got our little sri lankan in us you know yes. <laughs> well like i keep saying it's not just me it's like teamwork without the producers without the artists man i wouldn't be there so yeah it's teamwork yeah it is it is it is absolute teamwork so if you can put our differences aside my advice to the younger generation is that um try to understand uh, the ethics in the industry uh, which we learn from our seniors and which we hope to pass on to our juniors and if you continue the bond uh, the unity among everyone you know in the industry i think we can go a long way mm. and success is not determined by the amount of money you make or not even the amount of fame that you have it's uh, the amount of people that you would uh, help and assist to move forward while you are you know mm. moving forward because uh, i always used to say to my team the more captains we have the the number of ships we can sail but if I'm a captain and you guys are all on my ship when the ship sinks we all sink so make sure we have a fleet yeah yeah so we can jump onto another ship <laughs> thanks a lot for joining me man thank you so much yes high five <laughs>